started. So Great. let me, first of all, let me just say happy new year to everyone and welcome to the Women in Leadership Talk podcast. Uh, Jill, just want to take a moment and, and welcome you officially, and then Thank I'll do you. a little bit of housekeeping and share your bio. So thanks so much for joining us today. So again, welcome everyone. Uh, please, as I mentioned earlier, make sure your, your computers are on mute and that you have your video off during this portion of our call. And I will let you know when we get to the live Q&A when it's okay for you to actually um, you know, turn off your videos and, uh, and off your microphone so that you can, you can have a conversation with Jill as well. So I appreciate you being here today. Um, Jill Griffin has joined us today. She is an executive coach. She's a speaker. And I love this part. She is a BS buster. And, you know, we can all put our thought into what BS might be, but it's actually <laughs> your belief systems. <laughs> so we're, we're excited to learn about busting those belief systems. She is um, recognized by Advertising Age as one of the top 25 women to watch. She was also named one of the 50 most influential people in content marketing by NewsCred. She's also the two-time winner of Media Week's Media Planner of the Year, and she has spent about 20 years uh, coaching and building company cultures. Uh, Jill also had some uh, had a traumatic time in her life with a, a brain injury. And so today we're going to be talking about, you know, how do you rethink, how do you reset, reboot your life and career? And so Jill, I am thrilled to have you here today. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me and a warm welcome. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's jump in because I know everybody's excited and, and our time is always precious um, and we have lots to cover off. So let's just share a little bit about your background so that people have an understanding of, you know, the marketing background you came from, the brain trauma, and, and then how you became this, you know, awesome coach. Great. Yeah. Um, so I actually started my career at Atlantic Records and started working in marketing, be, you know, being in strategy, eventually moving into advertising and then working on like, you know, some of the world's most well-known brands, things like Coca-Cola, Samsung, Microsoft. But what was happening is just as my tra career trajectory was taking off, I had a head injury, um, traumatic brain injury is what it would be classified as. I was hiking in Australia. I took a solo trip to Australia to go hiking and I fell. And it resulted in me taking a tumble down a small waterfall, but still a waterfall. Um, so some other hikers helped me. And um, the interesting thing about brain injury is they're insidious. And it took about a good six months for the full impact of what had happened to really set in. Um, so it was the, the discovery that continued to unveil itself over the months post the, the, um, the concussion and then the brain injury. And really at at that point, what was also happening is my career, I'm, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing better. I'm, you know, getting into more and more opportunities and more leadership positions, but because of the cognitive impairment, I wasn't able to tell what was my own ego and my own nonsense, what was potentially a toxic situation or a tough work environment. There's the velocity of business that's natural in any environment. And what's just sort of natural, you know, it's work, not a hobby. What's just sort of natural that happens in work. And I couldn't really discern what was what. And I just got to a point that I was like, I'm out. Meaning I have to figure this out. It is a non-negotiable. So what I ended up doing was I started to put connections together that food and environment were making my system, my symptoms better or worse. So I started to study the brain, brain health, I became a functional nutrition educator. I became a health coach. I started doing that work and doing it through the lens of food and environment, which is what helped me learn about the brain and then learning cognitive behavioral therapy, positive psychology, and starting to then implement it and see that I was making changes and starting to be able to perform better. And then I just brought it back into my day job because I was doing all of that while I still maintained the day job. And in a very wow. short period of time, my performance and... Um, the rewards and the promotions started coming. My team was doing better. Everyone 
was like, what is going on? And, you know, many leadership or supervisor would be like two for the price of one. You're a strat, a marketing strategist and a coach, like go on (laughs) doing it. Right. So that's really what got me into doing this. And then about five years ago, so I've been a coach for 18 years, but about five years ago, I left corporate, um, with grace and excellence and went out on my own. And I've been doing, um, career strategy and executive coaching for the last five years, full time. Nice. Nice. Well, I mean, first of all, let's just go backwards a little bit there. I mean, okay. First of all, solo trip to Australia. Thank the Lord. Someone saw you, found yes. you when you had, yes. I mean, like, that's just, that is incredible that yeah. that happened. And, you know, that tenacity that you have to, you know, go out and conquer the world. Like you're, you're demonstrating that in multiple ways, <laughs> which mm-hmm. is beautiful to see. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm glad to see that you're thriving and, yes. you know, you're, you've got this great practice and, and you're still implementing what you were doing. Uh, you're just helping others learn how to do that, which is yeah. amazing. So yeah. just to tap in for a few minutes, if, if we don't, if you don't mind, when you talk about the brain health and mm-hmm understanding the brain more, what were maybe one or two of the things that were most pivotal for you to just to help you start to, you know, you know, recognize like where you were and where you wanted to get to? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, I, I would say the first thing that I had to figure out was what was in my control and what was out of my control. Mm-hmm. Um, so what was in my control is what I put in my body and understanding that there are foods and things that might be totally healthy and fine for you. But for me, they would put me into brain fog. They would put my motor skills really sloppy. I would often represent as if I was drunk. Meanwhile, I don't drink, right? I, um, lighting, um, stairwells, anything in my peripheral vision. If I'm in a workstation that happens to be facing a pathway with lots of movement, I would stand up and tip over, right? Oh, wow. So there was a constant, you know, how, Invisible disability is not really talked about and invisible disability is anything that's going to impair your everyday ability to take on regular actions and it's anything from brain injuries and dizziness to asthma, MS, you know, uh, ulcerative colitis, I mean, anything that's going to impair and and, um, things are very different today and we're getting more and more awareness, but when this first happened to me 18 years ago, there was no invisible disability section of the employee workbook, right? Yeah, (laughs) exactly. You're just, you're just figuring out on your own. So, so the, the part that I could control was what I could put in my environment. And then also there was parts I couldn't control. There's many things about the environment that I couldn't control. So does it mean that, which, you know, if we get into a little bit about um, the firing that I had, I mean, a lot of that had to do with how I couldn't perform in an environment that was being interpreted as me not being a team player yeah. um, because I couldn't. So, and just really getting understanding of what I can and can't do. So that, and knowing your non-negotiables, like it is non-negotiable for me to go to a place that has blinking lights and alcohol. <laughs> it's just not going to work. Yeah. Wow. So, so many things you shared there. And and I do want to jump into, you know, the trauma of getting fired in just a second, but even, you know, at front, like think back 18 years ago as an employer, I'm sure that some of your colleagues were even looking at you going, what is wrong with her? Like, is she on I drugs? I can only or- imagine hundred percent. They must've been like, she's so weird because what, because I didn't tell anybody, right. Yeah. I didn't want it to impact my opportunity. And I just hit it. I mean, my friends and family knew, but I wasn't talking about it. So I got to this level of constantly compartmentalizing my life, which mm-hmm. is really living a lie, which is exhausting. I was just because I felt that. that if you knew, then you would be like, you know, you'd you'd want to take care and be like, oh, well, maybe Jill shouldn't do that. Meanwhile, I'd be like, no, let me decide. And again, doesn't mean any of this was true. This is my thought process based yes. on, you know. <laughs> direct and indirect signaling that I would receive within our culture. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And that is such a, I mean, that is such a critical comment that you made, like, because we do create those stories ourselves, right? And we think that other people are thinking these things. Meanwhile, you know, most of the time they don't have a clue as to what's going on, but we're fueling ourselves with that, which, which can manifest physical ailments. And, and, you know, the good thing is you didn't allow that to define you. Um, so yeah, so let's jump into and talk about like what happened, um, you know, when you got fired and then how did you, how did you find that joy again with a career? (laughs) Yeah. Um, so the trauma was legit. 
you know, I mean, getting fired, at least, you know, I live in the U S and most of us, our healthcare is employer sponsored. So I have a brain injury. I have a traumatic brain injury. If I don't have healthcare, I don't get better. So losing my job meant you're actually taking away my ability to get help and get the healthcare that I need. So that trauma first was the initial blow of like, what am I going to do? Right. So, um, that was part one. And then, um, part two is I needed support. Like, as I say, I got my face coached off and it's really what helped me come into one of the reasons why I do what I do today is helping people work within the environment in situations that sometimes are absolutely untenable, but we still get to choose how we want to work within an environment. And other times our brains being a total jerk and we have to question and like, is this true? You know, um, a friend of mine always says, it's like, you're a toddler with a knife, right? <laughs> like mm. is, your, your brain is sort of doing it to yourself. Like, is this really true? And is this how I want to think about things? So that, you know, just to sort of set the stage there. And then the other thing that I did in order to deal with the trauma being fired is I had to decide how were they right? right? Because I needed to free myself and not be the victim. Because if I make them right now, I can acknowledge that, okay, that's, you know, we're in agreement. And I now take my power back because victims don't recover. If you stay in that victim mentality, you're not going to move on. So I had to find the way to free myself. And this meant that when, when I was told that I didn't participate in after work activities with clients that would often be like drinking and shots and things like that, they're right. I didn't participate, Mm -hmm. but I didn't tell them, well, that's totally not true. Some people knew some people didn't. Right. Um, when, when one of the leaders insisted on constantly having client meetings on, um, her yacht and I couldn't go on her yacht and told her why she was like, I think you can, I think you're making this up right? I haven't been on a boat in 18 years. That's not a car-based ferry because I can't be on a boat. That type of rocking just doesn't like the impact isn't the moment. It can be days or weeks after that. I'm still lost my motor skills because of the vestibular issue. So I could make her the villain, or I can just say from what her unconscious understanding was, and yes, she heard the words that I had a brain injury and a vestibular um, impairment, but she didn't really know. So I wasn't participating. I wasn't able to. And, you know, I think it's funny because I remember she said to me that I was strategic, successful, and fabulous, but today is going to be my last day. And I was like, you don't want people who are strategic and successful (laughs) and fabulous on your team. And she was like, we're done. And then she laughed and I was like, okay. Right. So that was like, really like, wow. And like, again, do I want to be in a position in which I'm a victim or do I want to say, okay, how am I going to approach this? How am I going to think about this differently? Wow. Good for you. I mean, that's, that's huge because I mean, okay, I get what you're saying. And and that was incredible awareness that you had about being the the victim or a villain, or, you know, do you want to let somebody else take your power from you? Or do you want to stand in that power? But even from her perspective, like she can't see it because looking at you, you look great, right? Nobody would ever know that there was anything wrong with you. So that's, that's a, that's in itself is is difficult, right? Because they can't see it. Only you are experiencing it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That was, that's a, and good for you for overcoming that and recognizing like, how do you, what's the go forward? Because well, the go forward was there's no more shame. There's no more hiding. (laughs) Like I was probably a heat seeking missile of resentment because I kept wanting to be back pre-injury. Yes, And that is not a possibility because I literally broke stuff within my ear canals, right? Like I can't fix that. Um, And constantly saying to myself, okay, I'm going to believe in myself and I know what I'm really good at and knowing my own strengths and how am I going to lean into that? And that's really where I started to get my joy back. Like it can be true that I can't go on a yacht and I can't therefore enjoy the camaraderie and the bonding and the collaboration between the company and clients. And that's true, but it doesn't mean that everything then like we go to all or nothing thinking and really teaching myself that like, this is one moment in time. And in a couple of years from now, it's not going to matter. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in a week from now, it's not going to (laughs) matter. 
Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. That's wonderful. And, and so to your point though, the mind is very powerful, right? So, so how did you develop those mindset practices that, you know, help you to deal with your mm-hmm. disability and, and how people started to see you, but your career and just your overall life? Yeah. Yeah. Um, great question. So I devoured everything that I could like that came into my vision, meaning so my insatiable curiosity reading about other successful people, and then also other people who had challenges, whether visible or invisible, and starting to put together the threads of what, you know, the circumstances are all different, but starting to put through some of the threads in which I was taking away. And a lot, maybe it came down to that your thought, your thought becomes your reality. So, um, I joke with my clients all the time and say, be ridiculous, be outrageous because it becomes your reality, right? Exactly. Or I can live in my reality. And so just to take that from like sort of the esoteric into the real, I can open social media first thing in the morning. And now that becomes my reality. So whatever tension or whatever is going on in everybody else's mindset, now I've decided to borrow and now I'm in that. Or I can choose to not do that, right? And therefore I have another reality. I mean, it's something as simple as that as being really clear in what I'm putting in my body, whether it's mental or physical. Um, And that went to like the content that I consume. And, you know, I made my career as a content creator. So I was a ferocious consumer of content. So what's the content I'm putting in my body? How am I thinking about this? Really starting every day with a prayer and meditation practice. Um, I then also do possibility work. I really think about what's possible for today. And then I go to the experience of if the possibility is realized, it is the day after the possibility. What, like, like, as I say, you know, like, New Year's Eve is coming. There's nothing you need to do to make New Year's Eve come. You just get to decide, are you celebrating? Are you dressing? Are you going out? Are you coming in? That's the way I think about possibility. This thing is possible. I will get past this. So how do I want to do it in the meantime? And I let that feeling, I use feelings as fuel. I let that rev up in my body. And then since my thoughts become things, if I'm taking action from joy and inspiration and determination and focus, well, guess what I'm going to create Absolutely. Right? versus if I'm taking action from fear and grasping and urgency. And like, I have to get out of this position. Guess what I'm going to create. <laughs> and that's really what this journey has been is understanding that like, this is a billion dollar machine and I'm going to protect it as much as possible. Wow. You said so many things there. Wow. <laughs> I, first of all, it, we're cut from the same cord. Okay. I'll just Amazing. tell you that, I love hearing I, that I'm the same. It's like, if you believe it, you'll achieve it. Right. Yep. And it's, it's that knowing it fully in your soul that the possibility is there. Uh, so I love that. What I, what I'd like us to take just a second and talk about if it's okay is yeah. when someone struggles to get there, Mm. because so often, I mean, you and I both coach on this. So often people struggle to see that possibility. What are, what are maybe two things that you do for yourself to really help that help someone move from that place of impossible to possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a really great question and very needed. Um, I try to find the neutralized thought Like I always say, I can't take you from first to fifth gear. I'll blow the clutch. I have to pass you through neutral. So if you're in a place where, oh my God, this is what's happened. And a place that's like, oh my God, this is never going to happen. What's the thought in between? Or maybe there's a few thoughts in between this idea of like, all right, it's possible it could happen. I'm willing to believe it's possible. I'm open to seeing that it's possible, right? And you just start like, wiggling off the two thoughts a little bit and finding something in the center is one of the things that I use regularly. And then also, um, if anyone's familiar with Byron Katie's work, I love her questions. Is it true? Yeah, I do. Can I prove it true? And usually by the time I say, can I prove it? It's done because you, it feels true, but you can't prove it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. I love her work. It's beautiful. The other one you made me think about when you were speaking there 
it, and I don't know if you've read this yet, but um, Dr. Joe Dispenza is Supernatural. Have you? Yes. Yeah. It's Fabulous. been a while, but I, I it's, it's come up a few times. So it means I need to refresh that reading that book again. Yeah. It's like so powerful because it's, it's really what, you know, it sounds like what you're embodying. It's what I'm embodying as well about, you know, the possibility and shifting that energy from a place of can't to can and, and really believing what's possible. Uh, but great book. I, I love that one. Awesome. So what do you feel like have been maybe, um, the most important lessons in your life, you know, you bet you were this, you know, amazing career person had this awesome, you know, work that you were doing. And then now you have this invisible disability. What have you learned through that? Yeah, that is a great question. Um, I think the first thing I would say that I've learned is like, there are no geographical solutions. So I think it's going to be better when I get there or, or if we think if I, you know what, maybe I should just move to a different city or what I hear a lot, um, you know, talking with a client yesterday who was saying like, I just feel if I could get the new job, if I get the new job, I'll get like my motivation back and I'll feel better. And it's like, you know, it doesn't work that way. I mean, John Kabat-Zinn wrote the book, wherever you are, there you are, right? Like it's, it, you're bringing yourself with you. So um, the biggest thing for me has always been like, I got to clean this up first. And again, if you are in a situation where it's um, threatening or abusive, we're not talking about that, but we're talking about thinking within the general malaise of work and life and career when we want so urgently to do something there are, are no geographical solutions and really find a way to clean that up. And the second thing that I've learned is that if I'm coming from urgency and I'm not running from a burning building, then it's fear talking. So really checking myself and being like, is this really urgent? Do I have to really send this email right now? Do I have to get this done right now? Or is there some fear behind that? And then just again, becoming the examiner of my thinking and like what is really going on here. Um, and then I think some level of acceptance, like stuff is going to happen and like, why not me? Right. Like, you know, I would say the first two or so years post the injury, there was a lot of why me, because I'm a young woman living in New York city who now can't go out to bars and not be impacted. Like I would go out, but then I'd be the weird girl in the corner, literally holding the bar because of the lighting, the music, the noise. I'm in like a vestibular nightmare and I'm trying to hold on. I'm like, oh, sure. I look dateable. <laughs> like, oh, let me get her number. Right. <laughs> so, so just having like a level of compassion for myself. Like I, I did the best I could at that time. And then I was just like, I can't, if, you know, if it's in me, it's for me, it's going to happen. It just may not be right now. So understanding that level of compassion and like, it, there has to be a level of acceptance like this. There's going to be a new normal. And, you know, I've said this before, but my brain injury was the greatest gift I could have ever, like, I didn't ask for it, but it was the greatest gift I ever got because of so many gifts that have come from it. Um, and a, a level of awareness that would not have been there had I not had it. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I think that's, that's such an important aspect, right? Because it opened your mind up to so many other things. And because you're tenacious, you've, you've got to find like, how do I not survive, but how do I thrive? Yeah. I mean, this has happened. Like I'm yeah. living with this now. Yeah. So what do I do with it? Yeah. Because that comes, that becomes the choice, right? Yeah. You can become the and if, <laughs> if today is a day where you're only surviving, that's okay. Cause it's not permanent. Exactly. Nothing is permanent. So it will shift at some point. Nice. Nice. I love it. So how do you, how do you feel or what have you done really to create that balance between the work and life and being able to live with your, your injury um, so that you can thrive and survive? Yeah. Um, well, I call it my three C's, right? Which is um, clarity, certainty, and confidence. So the first is like, I have to get real clarity on what are my non-negotiables? What are the yeses, the no's, and the maybes? Like you need a criteria for your maybe. 
And that's everything from, you know, for so many years, I would give what I viewed as my best to what I did from Monday through Friday at work. And then by Friday, I would basically spend half the weekend in bed because I'd be so exhausted or, you know, cognitively and vestibularly messed up so that the people that I care about and the people I love aren't getting me. So I had to be really clear of like, it's a bit of a mentality of time management, but also like, okay, I choose to do this work for a living and there is going to need to be some level of like going out and socializing, but it's one night this week. That's it. So what am, how am I doing? How am I looking at things? How am I carving out that, you know, I'm no longer doing the call at 5 a.m. with Dubai in the office. <laughs> right? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Right. So sure, that's a requirement of the job and that's okay because I get to work with other um, other people across the world and learn great um, things about their culture and their way of doing business. But, you know, maybe I can do it with the screen off in my, you know, my jams and like, you know, do it later. So it, I think what's so funny is we, at least speaking for myself, we tell ourselves stories that I have to be in the office dressed and ready to do that kind of thing where you really don't. Like you're showing up and you're doing the job. So that's, again, it's like, it's getting that level of clarity. I could do that call and then I can do yoga and then I can get in the shower. And if I come in an hour or two later, I've already been working. Like it's, you know, but there's never been a time in my life where someone's been like, Griffin, where were you? <laughs> right? But we tell ourselves these stories that we have to do things a certain way. So that type of clarity has been really helpful. Um, and then the second thing is like the thoughts, it really comes back to how do I want to train my brain to create the results that I want? So getting really certain in the thoughts that I want to be practicing regularly, the thoughts that I believe are ready and affirming them. And when I don't have something like we just said, like, how do I find like a neutralization or how do I wiggle off that? Or how do I go get coached? I mean, I have plenty of friends who have coached. I have my own coach. Like, you know, for some people, it might be therapy, depending on what they're working through. Some people, it might be coaching, but it's so much better to not do this alone. Yes. So <laughs> you go, go get the help, right? Like the, the impact of having a coach now, probably for 20 years in some capacity, um, different coaches, different groups, different times, like that level of getting certain so that you're able to shape your own thoughts and you're not outsourcing your thinking to everybody else and being like, well, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And then all of a sudden it's like your thought goes to the highest bidder. It's like, sure, check with a few people that are trusted confidants, but then what do I think? How do I want to go about this? And then the last thing is like within confidence is that so often we're so afraid to experience a crummy emotion and emotions sometimes really are just like, it's just a neurochemical. It's just pulsating through my body. I can get through this. It sucks. I don't want to feel this way right now, but if I allow myself to feel it, I'm going to get through the other side, which means I can create confidence because I know that I can experience anything. And even if it's uncomfortable or dis or like, I don't want this experience, I know I can get through it because if I don't, what I've seen both in some of my own behaviors over the years and then what I see in clients, it leads to this like overconsumption. So we're either, we don't want to feel it. So we overwork, we over social media, we're binging on Netflix, food, alcohol, recreational drugs, because we just don't want to feel that thing. And it's like, you just keep letting yourself process it eventually. The way the brain works, it goes, yeah, this sucks and I don't want this, but I know how to get through it. Going back to where it creates confidence. So those are the things that I've done. And again, I sort of bucketed them for myself into that sort of three C. So I remember when I'm in the moment where my brain is being the toddler with the knife and like the jerk. Okay. What's happening right now? Oh, well, Jill, you haven't eaten well. You didn't exercise and you haven't even thought work in two days because it's the weekend. No wonder you're off. Maybe you should do investigating what's floating around up there and start there before you decide any major decisions or what you're trying to do. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's, again, goes back to such great awareness that, you know, you've been able to harness um, to, to have such good impact on you. And it is okay to feel those emotions. And, and that's, 
that's what they are, right? But they can also be the signals that we need to wake us up, right? Sure. Um, I also loved what you said, Jill, a minute ago about you having a coach, right? Like, I actually was just working on something a minute ago that I was I was going to share with our community about like my own coach, right? Because I kept procrastinating on something and I was like, what is going on with me? Why am I procrastinating on this? And then he said to me so eloquently, he goes, Vicki, what is going on? He goes, what's up with you? He said, mm. why is that imposter syndrome popping in? And I went, what? Right. So a coach can help you really see things that you can't see yourself. Right. And I knew something was wrong. And I was like, why am I like, why am I resisting this so yeah. much? Yeah. Um, but but it, it's so important that we are having others who, you know, they will really help us to see ourselves the way we need to see ourselves, to take action, to move things um, so that we don't stay stuck in, you know, yeah. that emotional, you know, trauma or whatever is going on. I think that's a, that's a really important part. I love how you shared that. And something you said earlier, I want to come back to, we were talking about um, that outer environment. So, so often we get focused on what's happening outside of us and whether social media impacts us or emails impact us or whatever, you know, we think a lot of times that that's, what's going to fix the problem. And so what are some of the strategies that, you know, you've worked on to pull that back inside and, and help to be able to sustain the changes that you're making? Yeah, that's a, that's an interesting question. Um, I think it's probably a lot of the things that we've sort of touched on. Like when I'm looking outside myself or I'm reading a situation at work and deciding, well, I know what he's thinking or I know what she's thinking and they're doing this. I'm responding to what I think they're thinking. I'm kind of the crazy one, right? So if you're like, if you're working together and you're like, why is she acting that way? Or why is he saying that? It just, I like to have compassion for people and wondering if they got a kind of in their head. So I think it's like really separating story from fact. And then deciding how you want to respond to the facts and not allow yourself to get with the story. And that's kind of what I have found to be most helpful when I'm in environments. It also might mean there are some days that I have to like put bubble wrap around myself. If I'm having a day or, you know, things have happened in my personal life or something like that, that, um, you know, someone's sick or you get unfortunate news about a family member or something like that, you know, it, it might not be the day to do all the things that you plan to do. And maybe you can rework your schedule in some way or just be really gentle with yourself throughout the day. Know that this is a day that you can't let it all go. This is a day that, you know what? We're gonna make sure that we have a lunch. We're not gonna skip our meal. We're gonna have, a, you know, do what we can to balance our mind and body within what we're doing. Um, and then I think also what's really important is doing evaluations where, I do an evaluation on myself personally and professionally once a week. What worked this week? What didn't work? Like, are there things that I would do differently? How was I resourceful in creating that success or that failure? What did I learn from that? Like really getting clear in that. And again, it's all about learning how to build confidence and trust yourself so that when you're in outer environments that you're feeling like, oh God, like, you're able to tap into your own tools and not all these tools are going to work for everyone. Like maybe one or two of them will, but you're finding your own tools that you're able to shift yourself out of it. And then again, you know, if you have that friend or coach that you can tap into, obviously I would do that too, because it's always so funny when I work with a coach who's like, you know, everything you just said isn't true. And I'm like, no, but you know, it, and they're like, no, it's actually, there's no proof to anything you just said. Little reality yeah. check, right? Right. 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 <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, that those are incredible tips um, because I think that that gives our audience things that they can walk away with to actually implement. Um, and, and so, you know, this might be a really great time where we open up to questions mm -hmm. with okay. our audience. So if, you, if you, everyone wants to turn their video on and you can unmute yourselves, uh, if you have questions for Jill, we'd love to have you, you know, join us in the conversation now. And um, yeah, here's some of the questions you might have had.
Are we going to have any takers today? <laughs> Everybody's going to play shy. Yay. I don't have a question. I just wanted to say this was very, very valuable. And I've been listening the whole time. I just am sans a nanny today, uh, which is why I kept my video off because I didn't want any guests joining. But um, this was really great to hear. And, and thank you so much. I, I was so help it was super helpful just like in terms of being a woman and, and hearing things from Jill, who's such a strong woman in this industry. So just thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Janine. <laughs> right. Any other, any questions that anybody has? No, nope, everybody's going to be shy. Okay. Well, that's okay too. That's okay. I think that, you know, Jill, we've covered so many like very varying ranges of topics today, which has been incredible. So what would be your, before we wrap up, what would be your parting comments to our audience for, you know, just really setting strong intention for 2022 because you're my mm. first podcast this year <laughs> and mm. we want to start we want to kick off this year the right way yeah that's that's a good question um you know i would set intention i think it starts first thing in the morning and that the routine you choose in the morning what you choose to consume um i know we're busy i know many of us are parents and children are in and out of school based on the pandemic but when you're in the shower, when you're brushing your teeth, you can use your brain time to kind of run through, like, how do I want today to go? Who needs me on my A game today? Really thinking those things through. And how do I want to handle, like, if there's a challenge or a, a tough conversation or a tough meeting coming up, really running that through. And I think being intentional with your morning, your AM and PM, sort of like an AM and PM mindset is really what... Um, what I would say is, is a great way to kind of start any week, let alone any year. Um, that's what I would recommend. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause where your attention goes is where energy flows, right? So yep. if, if you're thinking positive, fueling, uh, good thoughts, like, you know, instead of seeing the, the doom and gloom or, oh my gosh, this might happen, really focusing that energy on what's going to serve you and mm -hmm. others in a, in a positive forward way. Yeah. Uh, it, it does make a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And I also like did this um, recently where I looked at what, what was my word for 21 and what was the reality and then based on that, getting clear on what's sort of the theme for 22. So again, doing that evaluation keeps us conscious and alert and we're not sort of kidding ourselves. So I think, again, whether you do it on a yearly basis because that feels right for you in January or you're thinking about it Friday between three and five as you're wrapping up your week, but just finding some ways to constantly check in versus just being on autopilot, which is so easy to do. And I have so much compassion for what everyone is going through within a pandemic. But again, we can still use our brain power um, in ways that are looking at how to build success moving forward. Beautiful, beautiful, awesome. Thanks, like Rochelle. See, yeah, Rochelle's got her hand up. Go ahead, Rochelle. <laughs> Hey, Jill, thanks for your time and that valuable information. My question is, what were your three C's again? I was so focused on clarity until the other two. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. So it's clarity, certainty, and confidence. Okay. Certainty means you can be certain because of your own thoughts. You get to choose your thoughts because everything else in the world is kind of uncertain except for what you're choosing to believe. And then the confidence comes from that I know that I can experience any emotion. And even if it may feel like awful, I can experience that emotion, get through the other side of it, which helps teach my brain. Okay, this wasn't ideal. I don't like this, but I can do this. And if I know I can get through something, that is how we create self-confidence is knowing that I can experience any emotion and get through the other side of it. Awesome, thank you. Of course. Great, great comment, Rochelle. Thank you for that. <laughs> So Jill, thank you so much. I mean, this has been such a, a pleasure having you on here today. And, and you know, some of the, the big things I heard uh, from you today is, you know, having compassion for yourself, taking some time to be very intentional and conscious of, you know, what you're thinking and how to shift that from 
Uh, you know, if, if we're on one end of the spectrum, even getting to neutrality is is movement, right? And so that energy starts to shift and flow. And those are very powerful, I think, tips to go into 2022 um, because we do have choice, right? Yeah. We have a choice in how we see yeah. things or how we do things. So I'm, I'm super grateful to you for that and grateful for you being here today. So, you know, let me just say wholeheartedly, thank you, thank you for that. Um, any last parting comments before I wrap us up here? Not for me, just this was a treat. Thanks for bringing me into your universe and your, um, you know, and having this conversation. And it's a good way to even remind myself of my own best thoughts. So good way to start the day in the year. Thanks. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you doing that with us today. Um, I just want to let our audience know we appreciate you being here. We know time is valuable. Uh, hopefully you've walked away with some beautiful tips uh, in how you'll set intention for 2022. And just to remind you that uh, January 26th will be our next live podcast with Eleanor Beaton. Eleanor is going to join us and we're going to be talking about how conforming to status quo can tank your confidence. Um, so that'll be an energetic, That's juicy. <laughs> yeah, that'll be an energetic, lively conversation. Uh, as I shared earlier, please do share our podcast with other amazing individuals in your life. Uh, Jill, you know, was so gracious in sharing with you her journey today. And so there may be someone else in your life that needs to hear that inspiration. Um, and, and, you know, that's how we all get stronger and get better together. So I want to thank you all again for being here. Happy New Year. Love to hear what your intentions are. And Jill, please stay in touch with us. And uh, we'll see you again very soon. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody take care. Have a great week.